The Battle of Suomis Army was a battle fought between Finnish and Soviet forces in the Winter War. The action took place from around December 7, 1939, to January 8, 1940. The outcome was a Finnish victory against superior forces. Suomis Army is considered the clearest, most important, and most significant Finnish victory in the northern half of Finland. In Finland, the battle is still seen today as a symbol of the entirety of Winter War itself. Chapter 1, Course of Battle On November 30, 1939, the Soviet 163rd Rifle Division crossed the border between Finland and the Soviet Union and advanced from the northeast towards the village of Suomusalmi. The Soviet objective was to advance to the city of Oulu, effectively cutting Finland in half. This sector had only one Finnish battalion, which was placed near right, outside Suomus Army. Suomus Army was taken with little resistance on December 7, but the Finns destroyed the village before this, to deny the Soviets shelter, and withdrew to the opposite shore of Lakes Niskanselka and Haukaipra. The first extensive fight started on December 8, when Soviet forces began to attack across the frozen lakes to the west. Their attempt failed completely. The second part of Soviet forces led the attack to the northwest on Pure Lanka, that was defended by the Er. P-16, that had just arrived. This attempt also failed. On December 9, the defenders were reinforced with a newly founded regiment. Colonel Hjornar Silasuo, was given the command of the Finnish forces and he began immediate countermeasures to regain Suomus army. The main forces advanced on Suomus army, but failed to take the village, suffering serious losses. On December 24, Soviet units counterattacked, but failed to break through the surrounding Finnish forces. Reinforced with two new regiments, the Finns again attacked on December 27. This time, they took the village, and the Soviets retreated in panic over the surrounding frozen lakes. A large part of them managed to reach the Russian border along the Kiantajavi Lake. During this time, the Soviet 44th Rifle Division had advanced from the east towards Suomus Army. It was entrenched on the road between Suomus Army and Rait and got caught up in the retreat of the other Soviet forces. Between January 4 and January 8, 1940, the 44th Rifle Division was divided into isolated groups and destroyed by the Finnish troops, leaving much heavy equipment for the Finnish troops. Chapter 2 – Outcome The battle resulted in a major victory for the Finns. If the Soviet Union had captured the city of Oulu, the Finns would have had to defend the country on two fronts and an important rail link to Sweden would have been severed. The battle also gave a decisive boost to the morale of the Finnish army. In addition, Finnish forces on the right Suomus Army Road captured a large amount of military supplies, including tanks, field guns, trucks, horses, anti-tank guns, machine guns, rifles and other weapons, which were greatly needed by the Finnish army. Alvar Aalto sculpted a memorial for the Finnish soldiers who died. Chapter 3 – Analysis the Battle of Suomus Army is often cited as an example of how a small force, properly led and fighting in familiar terrain, can defeat a vastly numerically superior enemy. Factors which contributed to the Finnish victory included. Finnish troops possessed higher mobility due to skis and sleds, by contrast, Soviet heavy equipment confined them to roads. The Soviet objective to cut Finland in half across the Oulu region, while appearing reasonable on a map, was inherently unrealistic, as the region was mostly forested marshland, with its road network consisting mainly of logging trails. Mechanized divisions had to rely on these, becoming easy targets for the mobile Finnish ski troops. Finnish strategy was flexible and often unorthodox, for example, Finnish troops targeted Soviet field kitchens, which demoralized Soviet soldiers fighting in a subarctic winter. The Soviet army was poorly equipped, especially with regard to winter camouflage clothing, by contrast, Finnish troops' equipment were well suited for warfare in deep snow and freezing temperatures. The Finnish army had very high morale, resulting from the fact that they were defending their nation. 
Soviet troops, however, possessed exclusively political reasons for their attack, consequently losing their will to fight soon despite continual efforts by Soviet propagandists. An additional factor remained Soviet counterintelligence failures, Finnish troops often intercepted the Soviet communications, which relied heavily on standard phone lines. The Finnish tactics involved simplicity where needed, as the final assault was a simple head-on charge, decreasing the chances of tactical errors. Rough weather also favored comparatively simple plans.